<sighs> hey there everyone, this is Life Ray, going back to my playthrough of Veteran Odyssey 3. Today we are going to continue exploration of the 8th floor, which is about all that's left of the second stratum before Ketos. Uh, okay. Yes, we got into a fight with a creature that we just absolutely slaughtered. That is what happened. Okay. That didn't take too long, and that's all I was missing. So I guess if you do the Abyssal Death killing, try to go back to Katra to save yourself a little Naradni thread or something. I don't think it's that big of a deal though, so... You know, do it however you want. Just come over here, I'm gonna report this request in, get a small reward in the form of experience to our party, as well as we, I think she took the sea beat away from us. I don't remember that much. Then we have a new mission, which is going to ask us to beat this Ocean Master Ketos. Meet with him and speak and learn more about the Dave City if need be, defeat him. Sea beat your tree apparently can control the currents within the labyrinth. The culture and the centuries have found a suspicious spot. And essentially, sixth floor has a spot. And that's it. Any deeds and lock a path, there's no need to check in with the us first, find the deep city. Be very careful though. This mission will be much more perilous than the previous ones. So this is just like the normal mission, except with Ketos instead. And now you have the sea bead, and you can do what you want to do. Okay. Now where we need to be with the sea bead is we come through here. One way shortcut, kind of what we just went through when we fought the Abyssal Death. Episode ago, there's currents going two spaces every time, all the way around the edge, and then there's going to be a shortcut to a th another small room. This one's two by two, I think, rather than what we've been running into before, because it's not not quite enough space for it to be three by three. So we fill the rest of this in. We can assume that there's currents at every corner to force you, uh, to force you down the corridor. So. There's two currents here, oops, two currents here, and two currents here. As well as a two-way shortcut here, which is going to lead to the sea bead place placer here, which is a strange pedestal in the middle of nowhere. Odd whirlpool, uh, you hold out the sea bead, and it stops the currents. Now this is useful for all sorts of treasures based all around the Sixth Stratum, as I will demonstrate now. Did not need the attack order in the front row, but oh well. I did not remember there being a chop point here, but that's good to know. Unfortunately, this chop point is really not the good one to go to, because the encounter rate on the way here is too high. Unless, of course, you have safe stroll to disregard what I just said, but if you don't have safe stroll, it's much safer to go the other way. Right as before, this corner lead... Well, this was previously blocked, but now that we've used the sea bead, we can go through and progress to the rest of the 8th floor, which is what we're going to be doing today. This is going to be somewhat of a long one, but, uh, hang in there. It won't take too terribly long, because there's a lot less of the 8th floor than you think. It being really limited to about only this area. And I think one of that area is locked behind a door, so... Start here. We're gonna start with the ecosystem quest, as well as just the general passageways that is the south part of this floor. Uh, the ecosystem quest is a little bit north of here. The rest of this is kind of just passageways, and I'm pretty sure there's no nothing here. I'll cut away until we run into the fight. Uh, until we run into a fight, or until something interesting happens. This is a... Metal Pond. Metal Pond's pretty neat. Let me see if I... I might have already gotten one this playthrough, but completely forgotten. Metapon is a medicine that will nullify all enemy buffs. It's like Adna Halo, except you don't need a princess to use it. It's a very nifty item to have if you aren't using Adna Halo or any other skills like that. 
and a very valuable item later on. It's a shame that its requirements for obtaining is a little high. You won't get it for quite some time. Double Great Hermit. Starfish set. This is not... This is not good. Set up the other charge. Surprised that guy didn't defend himself. When they don't defend themselves, they actually make themselves really vulnerable. Blind the king, that's great. Hits through the blind anyway, that's not great. Now, auto attack has an interesting side effect that if minions are summoned mid-turn, the auto attack will actually allow you to hit the minions as they're summoned in. That's- this is- if you select your targets manually, this won't happen. It's the only time where auto attacks technically have an advantage, is that they let you attack enemies that are summoned on that turn. It's not a very common occurrence when that's useful, but it does come in handy. This works because auto attack determines the target as the attacks are going by, and not all at once. Vincent to 23. Now this is where Vincent's gonna start running out of skill points to actually work on things. We can get Camp Mastery to higher levels. We can also work on getting other interesting things to higher levels. We're probably just gonna work on Camp Mastery some more. Because the TP recovery during foe rushing is very nifty. And Winona will get this too as she levels up. Quay. Okay, quite the expansive floor we got here. There's a big, giant, empty room. There's nothing actually super spectacular about this room, but you do have to evade an FOE while you're in it. Uh, you have to get the aggression of one anyway. And it's going to be from over there. What we want is the ecosystem quest is over here. So we're going to do that real quick. We apparently have angered the FOE, even though we came nowhere near his line of sight. But that's okay. He's going to lose interest in us eventually. And this is the ecosystem quest right here. As we proceed through the forest, we notice several mingled monster corpses. Bodies are chewed and torn away like anything you've ever seen before. Think back to the request and... Oh. This is unpleasant. This isn't actually an FOE. It's just a strong monster. But this is Glutton Beast. He's kind of a pain. Unless you have Hellfire and... Uh, Unless you have a, the other charged hellfire combo, because then he's a complete and total joke. As I will demonstrate thusly. Oh, he's defending this turn. He might actually live this. Nope! Nope, didn't stand a chance. Monster collapses at your feet and the, as you deliver the fatal blow, and judging from its... Voracious appetite and extreme ferocity. This must be the mutated monster. Let me move the mic a little bit away. Okay. You warily keep your eye around your surroundings as you write down the details about the creature. Now that your report is finished, we should turn that in. Well, not right now, but not maybe not. Uh, get, getting around that to that later, I suppose. Zero Ninja leveled somewhere, and I don't know how. Fire mastery to four. Good girl. Anyone else got? Oh, all there was lots of ninja levels. Oh man. This would be mine heal to four, party heal to mine heal to five, and not get party heal at all. And this is what are you working on? Provoke, provoke. My money is on you are working on provoke, because if you were working on an anti, I would know and you're not. So you're working on provoke. There you go. Right, now we're gonna dance with an FOE, as we promised we would. Or we can totally just kill him. Alright, I feel kinda like I cheated last time by using the Hellfire Ethic Charge combo, so this time I'm gonna show you how it's done without that combo. Oh, actually this is a bad idea, because if I want to do the foe- oh, yeah, if I want to do the foe rush, I want as many foes as possible to be- Okay, so we'll just save this for the foe rush then. Let's not actually do this fight. But it will get his no. He's not even phased. Well, I guess we did get a preemptive, so he actually didn't notice us at all. 
Okay, so get him in line of sight. You have to drag him out here. And that is the smallest space you can control one of these guys. In a group of eight tiles, or six tiles, you can go- or eight tiles, actually. In a span of eight tiles is all it takes to evade these guys, and that's important because one of these comes dangerously close to being only eight tiles wide. Okay, so we're used to the small circle thing. It appears that this links back up with this, and we meet a new enemy of the floor, which very highly resembles the Glutton Beast, but isn't meet the Iron Turtle. The Iron Turtle is like the Glutton Beast in every way. He's highly resistant to all of, all of the things, but the moment you fling magic at him, he starts crying like a little baby. So, you know, having magic helps. If you don't have magic, bringing something that will apply magic to your weapons, like a uh, uh, fire oil, ice oil, or whatever they're called, shock oil. Zara just instantly died, that was awesome. He's almost dead. If you have magic, this guy's a pushover. If you don't have magic, then this guy might take either a long time to beat, or he might just be too hard for you. Thankfully, we have Vincent to keep people like Zara up on, on their feet. Take that shortcut. I'm not really going to care that that guy is still behind us and hasn't given up his grudge on us, even though we went through a shortcut. That's probably because we did that on his off turn, but it doesn't matter. He's off of our case. There's an item point you will probably never visit, so have fun with that. It's technically not that far out of the way. I mean, if we go up these stairs, that's this staircase right here. That's still farther away than the other two top points. Yeah, there's absolutely no reason to come to this one. Not unless you started from the staircase from over here. There's no reason to go to that one. There's a camp spot over here, actually. I don't remember if I brought tents or not, but that would be a very nice luxury right now. Not Coral Walrus set. Now we're gonna charge down this Walrus like it was no one's business. I'm gonna set up the guard tactic because we don't really have any forms of defense right now, and these guys hit really hard. Oh, we blinded him. Great. Let's now let's just watch him hit through the blind, which he didn't. Cool. All right now we can fling ice at these guys and get them off our case. Wow, this walrus is very resilient. A lot of the enemies in the, in the stratums are really resilient unless you use magic somewhere. Uh, Arbalist and Zodiacs are the easiest ways to inflict elemental damage, but uh, if you don't, once again, you have the arm skills on the princesses and the oils to help you out. It's very important that you have something like that. The Labyrinth favors those who use multiple kinds of tactics. Uh, time to see if I actually brought a tent with me. If I did, then this will be amazing. Now, previously, uh, at level 5, it only healed 100 TP. This should fully heal. Which it did, because Vince's entire level of camp mastery always comes in handy. Very nice, let us move along. That moves up, that moves over, this moves over some more. Okay, once again, we have more than enough space to get around this guy. There's nothing really else in this space. There might be a shortcut, but we'll find it, the shortcut if it's on the other side. Because there's no blue flowers on this side to help me out. So we should have caught this guy's attention. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Huh. De I guess it depends on what kind of walk cycle he's in, because we did that in the six grays there, but... I digress. It, you can do it with an absurdly smaller amount of space than what you're given. But they give you a lot of space in case you muck it up somehow. So it's really nice that they make these rooms more and more condensed to try to make challenge you to do the puzzle in less and less moves. Because it's the same puzzle every time, you just need to figure it out. 
This moves to a place we can't go yet. Or it can go, but doesn't have much application to us. Triple starfish iron turtle set. I believe the starfish are only here purely as ways to for them to evade getting hit by fire, or ice, or volt, or whatever. I think I'm just gonna focus down the turtle first and then do the starfish. Vincent's higher tiered armor makes him survive much better than Zara does. I believe that all we need is another magic so we can start focusing the starfish down with the physical characters. Probably should have used attack order for this fight might actually last a while, but I'm not too worried about it. Okay, I kind of expected him to die to that. He didn't. Completely wrecked Vincent. Almost wrecked Kira. Uh, we're going to need you to defend. No, we can do the line heal as we. Bodyguard here. I don't remember if I actually got somebody to kill the turtle. Okay, I did. Good to know. Line heal does a ridiculous amount of healing now that it's higher leveled. And the fight's taking longer and longer. 23, twice. Those, I mean, those are just starfish, so I probably cut that out anyway. Monarch march to 10. No longer need to worry about that. Provoke to 8. I don't work on antis on this hoplite because... She's not going to actually be around long enough for them to really make the difference. Uh, she's mostly just here for beginning's sake. Here's a take point you will, you will once again never visit, so... Revel in it while you can. If you have farmers like directly on you that already have harvestry, you can get it there, but otherwise not really much use for that one. Okay, they just keep throwing these iron turtles with things that are much more dangerous. So we're gonna get the attack order, because we didn't learn that last time. Um, this isn't exactly the same, but we will still use Hellfire. A and a combination of both that and this Fire Star will do us some good. Let's see where this takes us. 198 damage is normal, he defends. Okay, Hellfire is actually much, much less useful if you do it like that. We should still have this turtle dead. Very nice. Get a line hill out, just keep everybody fresh. Nice, we should be able to follow attack from here. Okay, north path is where we need to go. This is kind of just an extra side path that leads to a star door that we can't enter just yet. Just mark the door as a star door and be on your way. Alright, now this is the smallest space they will give you for the same puzzle for the f third time. Is there a shortcut here? No. I'm thinking somewhere else. There's a small dead end in this corner. Doesn't lead anywhere, just dead ends. Not useful at all. Walk in here, map it once, never enter it again. Preemptive octopus iron turtle set. Once again, throwing the mantra that the iron dribble has to be paired with everything. I have to charge this. Kill the turtle in one blow. See if you can. I did not use the attack order. And it will be fine. I can see why it being paired with the Coral Octopus would be bad though, because if the Coral Octopus headbinds your mage, you're going to be less likely to deal with the turtle. So it makes sense. Ok, 
Okay, this guy didn't get our didn't get this guy's attention, so we have to do that now. Very small space here. Okay, we got his attention. Well, this one's a little different because we're approaching it from a different angle. The upper left should be the same though. Like that. Very nice. Good thing about him only moving once for every time you move twice is that it's still easy enough to get the solution even if you don't get the optimal one. Climb through here. And we essentially have very easy access to the rest of this labyrinth, which will lead to Ketos. As we can see here, there's just one last dead end, and then it leads straight to Ketos. And if the moment we walk up to Ketos' door, things are gonna happen. Don't want to do that just yet. But for now, that is a good place to end this off. So let us to mark it out. Sell some stuff. And a value was gotten. Okay. So hey there everyone, this has been Life Forget Flowers. I thank you for watching. Next time will probably be the Faux Rush. Uh, I'm going to see you guys then. Goodbye.